welcome to a next edition of CEC Gurukul Lectures. Today happens to be India's National Technology Day. In India, National Technology Day is celebrated on 11th May every year to commemorate the achievements of scientists, researchers, engineers and all others including common citizens who are involved in the field of science and technology. Now why is this technology day celebrated? This day was first observed on 11th May 1999 and the day was chosen because on this day India successfully broke into the elite group of countries with nuclear weapons. Right from 1974 when the Buddha finally smiled at Pokhran to this day we had five nuclear tests codenamed Operation Shakti in Pokhran 2 way back in 1998. The National Technology Day, the genesis lies in the fact that May 11 marks the anniversary of Pokhran II nuclear tests of 1998. Our former president, late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, lovingly known as India's Missile Man, spearheaded the Pokhran II tests. And the then Prime Minister, late Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee, declared India a nuclear state, making it the sixth country in the world to join the elite nuclear club. First we discuss the technological prowess of India in ancient times. First case happens to be the case of Woods Steel. It is a pioneering steel alloy matrix that was developed first in India and Woods Steel was a crucible steel characterized by a pattern of bands. It was and has been known by many names including Ukku, Hindwani and Serikaran and the steel was used to make the famed Damascus swords of yore that could cleave easily a free falling silk scarf or even a block of wood with the same ease that is. It was produced by the Tamils of Chera dynasty and it was and has still date has been one of the finest steel of the ancient world that was made by heating black magnetite ore in the presence of carbon in a sealed clay crucible kept inside a charcoal furnace. The second technological innovation that we had in ancient India was the smelting of zinc. India was the first to smelt zinc by the distillation process, which is an advanced technique derived from a long experience of ancient alchemy. The ancient Persians had also attempted to reduce zinc oxide in an open furnace but had failed. The area of Zawar in the Tiri Valley of Rajasthan is the world's first known ancient zinc smelting site. The distillation technique of zinc production goes way back to the 12th century AD and is considered to be a very important technological contribution of India to the world. The third was the existence of seamless metal globe. It is considered as one of the most remarkable feats in metallurgy and the first seamless celestial globe was made in the area which is now known as Kashmir by Ali Kashmiri Ibn Lukman in the reign of Emperor Akbar. In a major feat in metallurgy, the Mughal metallurgists pioneered the method of lost wax casting to make 20 other globe masterpieces during the entire reign of Mughal Empire. Before the modern globes were rediscovered in the 1980s, the metallurgists believed that it was technically impossible to produce metal globes without any seams, even with the existence of modern technology. The third case, the fourth one to be precise, is the case of plastic surgery. It was a book written by Shushruta in the 6th century BC wherein the name of the book being Shushruta Samhita which is considered to be one of the most comprehensive textbooks of ancient surgery. The text mentions various illnesses, plans, preparations and cures along with the complex techniques of plastic surgery that could be carried out during that time. The Shushruta Samhita is most well known contribution to plastic surgery is the reconstruction of the nose among the original inhabitants in India. The popularly nose reconstruction nowadays is known as the rhinoplasty. 
the second case also of in during ancient times the second case of modern medical procedure is that of cataract surgery shushruta performed the first cataract surgery to remove the cataract from the eyes and in this case he used a curved needle jawamukhi salaka is the name of the needle that was used to loosen the lens and push the cataract out of the field of vision of the patient the eye of the patient would then be bandaged for a few days till it healed completely the case of iron case rockets the use of first iron case rockets was reported way back in 1780s by the soldiers of tipu sultan of mysore who successfully used them against the then occupiers of Brit from british east india company he crafted long iron tubes filled them with gunpowder and fastened them to bamboo poles to create the predecessor of the modern rockets that are used by soldiers nowadays with a range of about 2 km the rockets were one of the best in the world at the time and caused lot of fear and confusion along with grave damage to the british soldiers due to them the british suffered one of the worst ever defeats in india at the hands of tipu sultan the age old use of earthen pot to cool water also originated in india here in the cooling process works through evaporative cooling the capillary action causes the water to evaporate from the mini pores in the pot taking the heat away from the water inside and thus making the water inside cooler than the outside temperature now we come to the technological prowess of modern india first we begin with the existence of world class indian metro system the urban rail transit in india plays an important role in intra city transportation in major cities which are highly populated and we have lot of metropolitan cities in india which are highly populated due to migration of labor from smaller cities to these big cities mainly like delhi chennai mumbai calcutta bengaluru hyderabad to name a few the metro system total in totality would consist of rapid transit suburban rail monorail and tram systems and according to a report published in recently in 2021 a total of 2.63 billion people travel annually in metro systems across india's 13 major cities the world class indian metro system is able to match up the standards of major cities worldwide and the combined length of around 752 odd kilometers of metro systems in india makes it as the fifth longest in the world and we are proud to say that metro has been a great success in india mainly because it is a mass mover it is able to cater to the requirements of the local populace next technological prowess shown by indian scientists and engineers has been the establishment of indian regional navigation satellite system or in short IRNSS this is also popularly known as the navic the indian irnss has the operational name of navic and it is an autonomous regional satellite navigation system that is able to provide accurate real time positioning and timing services it not only covers india but also it extends its reach to around 1500 kilometers around it and scientists are actively engaged to increase its reach still further it is important to note that presently the gps global positioning system is owned by america with its allies and hence there is an urgent need or perceptible need to have our own iran ss so that india does not have to depend on any foreign power to provide the information when in need 
the need was truly felt during the unfortunate bomb blasts and terrorist attacks in Mumbai. The IRNSS has thus far been able to put seven satellites in space and NAVIC is in active stages of being implemented in India. Third one is the formation of our very own Indian Space Research Organization. It's the National Space Agency of India. ISRO performs all tasks related to space based applications, space exploration and development of related technologies. ISRO has been at the forefront of exporting technology also and India has been able to give stiff competition to both American Space Agency NASA as well as Ariane from Europe. ISRO has been successful in launching multiple satellites in one go and as per records it holds the world record in launching 114 satellites in one single launch. ISRO is one of the six government space agencies in the world and it possesses full launch capabilities. It deploys cryogenic engines besides the modern air breathing ones. It has launched extraterrestrial missions including those to the moon and it operates a large fleet of artificial satellites. These artificial satellites not only give us weather forecasting data, but they have been able to give us map out the India's topography besides other military applications. The satellite launch vehicles that have been used by ISRO have been used to carry spacecraft to space. India at present uses two operational launchers, the polar satellite launch vehicle and the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle. The polar satellite launch vehicle uses the polar axis of the earth to place the satellites and they have mostly many uses including weather forecasting and military. Geosynchronous are used to launch satellites mainly for communication so that as also our own IRNSS. The GSLV with its indigenous cryogenic upper stage engines has enabled the launching up to two ton class of communication satellites with a combination of accuracy, efficiency, power and immaculate planning India and space agency ISRO have been able to launch multiple satellite launch vehicle operations. ISRO's satellite launch vehicles are mainly designed at India's Vikram Sarabhai Space Center and in the figure one can see the various types of vehicles that are in operation. The Satish Dhawan Space Center named after one of our great scientists at Shar is the spaceport and India is responsible for integration of these launchers. The next case is the discovery of or the inventor of Pentium chip by Vinod Dham. Vinod Dham is known as the father of the Pentium chip and for those of us who have been into this field we all understand that Pentium chip has been proffered quantum leap of performance of the computers that we get to see today. In our age we have used different architecture of chips beginning from 286 to 386 to 486 before the concept of cores, multiple cores came or was implemented after this discovery by Vinod Dham and that materialized into the existence of or creation of the Pentium chip. The Pentium microprocessor brought about a revolution in the world of computing and today we are able to use more than 2 gigahertz of computing power in each computer. Another popular technological application that we get to see is the Brahmos hypersonic missile. It is a medium range stealthy 
ramjet supersonic cruise missile that can be launched from submarine, ships, aircraft or land. It is developed with the joint efforts of India and Russia. It is the fastest supersonic cruise missile in the world with many anti-missile systems facing or failure in front of it. An unintentional launch of this particular missile was recently seen in the case quite deep into Pakistan before being detected. The name Brahmos is the amalgamation formed from the names of two respected rivers, one Brahmaputra of India and the other Moskva of Russia. It's a joint venture between this missile was developed with a joint venture between Russian Federation's NPO Mashinostronia and India's Defense Research and Development Organization. Together, they formed a company called Brahmos Aerospace. Recently, India has been successful in bagging a US dollar 375 million Brahmos deal with Philippines. Second, in this case, is the case of development of light compact aircraft Tejas 2. The Hindustan Aeronautics Limited has developed this Tejas Mark II, which is a light compact aircraft. It's a single engine. It has Kana Delta wings, multi-role compact aircraft, which is developed not only by HAL, but also the agencies like ADA, as well as ARDC of HAL. From the figure, it can be seen that the jet, although it has a single engine, but it has a very, very decent payload capability. The multiple pylons that can be seen from the inverted jet, which are currently kept empty, give us or provide the defense services options to load them with multiple munitions. The development of the indigenous helicopters Dhruv, Rudra and light combat aircraft. Again, Hindustan Aeronauticals Limited developed the light combat aircraft which is a multi-role attack helicopter manufactured by it. The need for LCH was actually felt during the Kargil War of 1999 and hence one can actually see indigenization of advanced technology by the scientists and engineers of India. Dhruv is basically used for light military operations. Rudra is armed and light combat aircraft is able to match capabilities of advanced US helicopters like Apache. Next case is of the main battle tank Arjun. Arjun is a third generation main battle tank developed by CBRD based at Avadi in Tamil Nadu. It's a lab of DRDO. It features a 120mm rifled main gun which is indigenously developed armor piercing fin stabilized discarding ammunition. It has a coaxial 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine gun and NSVT 12.7 millimeter machine gun as its primary weapons. The main battle tank Arjun is powered by a single multi fuel diesel engine rated at a very high value of 1400 horsepower and it can achieve a maximum speed of 70 km per hour and a cross country speed of 40 km per hour. In its comparison with T90 main battle tank imported from Russia, it could not only match the T90 tank, at some places it was able to outgun the Russian tank. Finally, is the case of the Astra missiles. These are beyond visual range, active radar homing air to air missiles developed by DRDO. It can be a short range, it can be a long range and Rudra missiles. These are the recent missiles, the technology being developed by DRDO. They are primarily meant for suppression of enemy air defenses and they are used for destroying enemy surveillance radars. It's the first anti-radiation missile to be developed in India. Thank you so much.